Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Excellent. I'm very pleased to be here. It's my first and I hope won't be the last um, of an invitation to join the Africa Business Conference. This is the 22nd African Business Conference and I think this year is themed Africa 2020 and it's around creating a clear vision for that future prosperity that Africa desires. I'm going to spend the next few minutes speaking about what I think are the critical ingredients to support Africa in attaining that vision that it has for itself. I see a lot of people staring at me. I have no checks to offer. All the checks have been given, so don't expect any check uh, given at this point. My name is Roosevelt Chinaka Michael and Kemakolam Ogbonna. <laughs> I, I think what is, what is tricky about this name is that you could hear a bit of Christian, African, English, but truly that's who I am. And this name means something to me because each one on his own represents a piece of me. And I hold it jealously and guard it. No different from Kintakunte in Roots. If you pronounce my name wrongly, we might have a fight. <laughs> but I think what's interesting about names is that they speak to a heritage. They tell where the individual is from. And when I mention my name, if you're a Nigerian, you can figure out, yeah, pretty much he's from the East. But I think more importantly is that it tells about the mystery of a future. So anyone who's watched The Lion King will remember how Simba was presented and his proud father, Mufasa, was there looking on. And the reality is that that mystery is what Africa represents today. Everyone says there's so much potential. It's like when a child is born, everyone trunks to the house and you want to see the child's face because you're hoping that written on that face you could tell who the child looks like. Who would, what would he be in the future? And I think Africa, in some sense, represents that mystery today. There's so much going on. But what would Africa be in the future? And I think that's where I would like, I'd like to focus my conversation today. And I'll do that in a very interesting way. I think my names in themselves are prophetic in some sense and will give some insight into how my vision of Africa in the future is. My first name is Roosevelt, as I said. And Roosevelt is a bastardized Dutch name, which in real sense is pronounced Rosenfeld. Are there any Dutch people here before I murder the name? Rosenfeld means field of roses. It's not one rose, it's a field of roses. It speaks to abundance. It speaks to plentiness. And Africa is blessed with a lot of abundance, loads of riches, from the gold in Ghana and places like South Africa, diamonds in Sierra Leone and Liberia, oil in Nigeria, tantalite in Egypt, copper in Zambia, we're fully blessed, but we're not a wealthy continent because that's all we have, natural resources. And we've not changed the conversation beyond how much oil or copper or tantalite or cobalt we have to how much wealth we are creating for our people. That conversation needs to change for Africa to move forward. Now, to be able to achieve that, Africa is blessed in human resources. 1.6 billion people. 65% of them are considered youths. Average population growth, about 3% in many African nations. There's a projection that 65% of arable land will be in Africa by 2050. So we have land. We also have people. 
And what we lack is capital. The capital formation in Africa is very weak. Infrastructure does not exist. The World Bank estimates that in Nigeria alone, about $18 billion has to be, $88 billion has to be spent annually for the next 14 years for Nigeria to bridge the infrastructure gap that we have today. That's a lot of money. But in there is a lot of potential because the government can't do it alone. We have to invest in technology, roads, schools, hospitals. Because we need not just people, not just land, not just abundance in resources. We need the right infrastructure to pull all of this together to make it work. The conversation has to be about wealth creation, not celebrating the abundance of our natural wealth, because that we did nothing to attain. It's God-given. The work that you and I and all the brilliant Africans, including Dasmus and Solar Freeze and everyone who's been awarded today, is how do we build the capital formation to start having the conversation around wealth. That's what matters. My second name, which was the name I was given when I was baptized, is Michael. And for those of you who have any Christian background, do you remember that Michael was an angel, always going out to spread the word and say something, being sent? He was almost like the first superhero. Always there when you're just at your lowest point. He was always there. We have to go out as ambassadors of Africa, spreading the word. We have to change the narrative. We have to own the narrative. There's a very interesting African proverb that says, until a lion has a historian, the story of the hunt will always favor the hunted, or the hunter, rather. So the hunter will tell the story from his own perspective. We need to own the Africa story. We need to change the narrative. Ours is not a continent that is full of disease, poverty, war, strife, lack of institutions. But that's all that we hear, because that's all that the media feeds on. But whose responsibility is it to change the narrative? Sometimes it takes just one person doing and standing for what is right. Each of us building an oasis of sanity in that circle of influence that we have. We need to start telling the Africa story differently. We all seated here are ambassadors of Africa. Maybe not political ambassadors, but certainly what we do and say matters. I had the opportunity of doing an MBA in China, just out of curiosity. This was before the virus. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking 2017, so I, some people have, I shook hands with some people, don't go start washing your hands. And, and some of the school trips we had, we went to villages. I happened to be the first black person that some of those people have seen. And I knew I represented not just myself, I represented the people. As Africans, we matter. The things we say matter. The things we do matter. And we must always remember that when we engage with the rest of the world. We must tell a different African story. But the mistake we shouldn't make is to be focused on just telling a story. It must be backed up by what we do. So I'm extremely proud looking at young Africans sitting in a setting like this. You guys are already winners. This is what some people dream of and might never attain. And the fact that you're here and you have a voice today, make it count. And make it count for something that is meaningful. My third name, and this is very traditional, and I'll pronounce it as it's spelled, is Chi Na Ka. Sounds like Kunta Kinte, you know, something really dramatic. 
And what Chenaka means is a, an architect, a pathfinder, a creator. And I think it embodies the African spirit of innovation. For us to win as Africans, we need to not just solve today's problems, but we need to start thinking about the innovative ways we can solve today's problems without jeopardizing the future of tomorrow. We must think out of the box. We must dare to do things differently. Thomas Sankara is the one who said that Africans must dare to dream. You know, growing up as a child, I remember something we used to watch called Space 1999. Uh, I'm not sure a lot of people will be in that age group. But what was interesting about Space 1999 was that they used to talk to themselves over a screen. And today we do FaceTime. That's the power of a dream. We must dare to dream. Within my bank and my institution, what we say is that the tomorrow that you want, if you want to own it, create it yourself today. We must energize the likes of Solar Freeze and many Africans who are innovative and are looking for an outlet to win. Now, the challenge around innovation is if you're in a society where the conversation is not built around merit, trying to innovate means nothing. Because it's not about who is best at it. It's about who knows who. The Africa of tomorrow to win has to be one that is, the conversation is around merit. It's around who brings the best to the table such that we can win. My fourth name is Nkema Kolam very heavy to pronounce, given to me by my grandmother. And literally it means, this one that is mine should not go bad. This one that is mine should not cost me pain. The wealth that we have in Africa has triggered so much wars and strife. We fight for diamond, we fight for oil, and it divides us as against bringing us together. For Africa to win in the future, it has to be built around sustainability. It's not about what we have today. It's about how we can use the little that we have to ensure that even the poorest amongst us have a voice and are proud of who they are and what they represent. It has to be an Africa that is built on inclusiveness, on ensuring that everybody's voice is heard. We have to focus on the environment. It's not enough to plunder today and bequeath to the next generation an environment that is not conducive enough for them to live and strive and look forward to the, vision, to the future. We have to look at women, children, the most vulnerable amongst us, and bring them into the conversation. It's not enough to pay lip service to supporting women and bring, making it more inclusive. We must create a platform that allows women to strive, not just in the workplace, but even at home. We have to build governance and institutions and try and break away from that Messiah syndrome that a lot of African nations have. This is the guy who's come to save us. The Messiah syndrome in itself builds despots and dictators, and they turn around and bite us. But we created those monsters. We have to build around sustainability, the environment. For businesses, it's beyond profit. It has to be about the people they serve, the communities they engage in and ensuring that the planet stays today as well as tomorrow. My family name or my surname is Ogbonna, which translated means father's friend, a bosom, someone you really cherish. Now, everyone has a friend. I think the, the beauty of a friend is that they're there for you at your highs and lows. You go through life with them, go through pain and joy 
But the greatest friends are the ones who can tell you the truth to your face. Make you understand the places where you've gone wrong and get you to retrace your steps. For Africa to work in the future, we need to be able to tell truth to power. And we must build institutions that allow it to work. And you're not afraid to participate. A lot of us might never get into politics because, we, as we say, it's too dirty. But as long as we stand by the sideline and watch others determine the future of Africa, or our nation specifically, and never get involved, then we have no say. And the worst of us, we lead the best of us. And there's no gainsaying as to exactly where we will end up. There must be peer review across Africa. We must build a system where nations can hold each other accountable for the things they do and how they do it. I think it was Kwame Krumah who says that you're not just African because you were born in the continent and carry an African passport. You're African because the African blood flows in your veins. So I don't care where you are, where you were born. If you're African, you will know. The blood is there. And we must stand together to support Africa to grow. Several African countries, when a Caucasian comes to set up a business, he can do it in two minutes. If a fellow African comes to set up a business, it takes him three years. Because as Africans, we find it difficult to work together. That has to change for Africa to grow. We must be trade partners. We must draw energies. We must think about the Pan-Africanists, the likes of uh, Nyerere, um, um, Mandela, the, the likes of Namdi Azikiwe, and all of those guys who try to build an inclusive Africa where we pool our resources, pool our energies together to build a continent for the betterment of the people. I don't care how far you try to run or hide or deny the blood that, blow, that flows through your veins. You need to understand something. As Africans, our self-worth is built on the self-worth of the community that we come from. So I can run as far as I want to. Each time an African is being judged for good or for bad, whether you like it or not, it rubs off on you some way. So I'm Nigerian. And the first thing you hear when you go to many markets to do business is that someone says, are you a 419? There are less than 5% of Nigerians, what do I mean 5%? Less than 100,000 Nigerians who have colored the rest of the community with the 419 toga. And it's very hard to shake away. So we must remember to work together to build partnerships across Africa. I've shared with you the five critical ingredients as I see it necessary to support Africa as we go into the future. The first I shared with you is the conversation around wealth. Let's move away from abundance and the natural resources that we have and start having a conversation around building wealth for Africa. Let's change the narrative. A lot of people ask me at the release of Black Panther whether Wakanda was a real nation. And I'm sure you know what my answer was. Yeah? My answer was yes. <laughs> because Africa truly can be that. And we must be proud of that story. It was Chimamanda Adichie who says that if you tell the people one thing, over and over and over again, just that one thing. After a while, they become that. So let's change the narrative. Let's tell ourselves that one thing, and let it be that Africans are great in themselves. And that collective spirit will be the force that we require to change our continent. The third thing I spoke about 
was around building innovation and having a society that's built around merit and having that conversation that forces talent and youth, the likes of Solo Freeze, to come to the center stage and have a voice. Let's build sustainability. Let's think about the most vulnerable amongst us because they matter too. Let's give them a platform to have a voice. And let's build partnerships. Because Africa's problems cannot be fixed by anybody else but Africans themselves. So we must come together, work collectively to build that partnership. I work for an institution called Access Bank. Access Bank is the fastest growing bank in Africa over the last 18 years. It also happens to be the largest African bank within our own markets. What has made Access Bank interesting, or an interesting place to work, is that these are the conversations we have every day. Every day we seek to make an impact on women, working with the World Bank and, the, and, and IFC to build a sustainable environment for women businesses to thrive. And for that, we have a W initiative, supporting women new in business and are looking for finance to grow. We have conversations around society and the impact on climate. We happen to be the only African bank that signed up to the global initiative around sustainable banking at the last World Bank conference in DC. We're working with Global Initiative to tell a different story about Nigeria. We're working with the Ford Foundation to look at Africa differently and positioning Africa in such a manner that we begin to see it in the new light that it is. There's a lot of music in Africa. In Nigeria alone, there are 774 different tribes and languages. That's a rich culture, but nobody tells that story. There's fashion, there's music. We need to retell the African story. Working with the likes of Ford Foundation and Global Citizen, Access Bank is helping to tell that story. I've been in the bank for 18 years, and the reason I get excited every day I come to work is that opportunity to be able to make impact, not just in the lives of the people who work with us, but the communities and the markets that we serve. As I close, I urge you to think about these five critical things, how they impact you as an individual, the markets that you operate in, and I think more importantly, what you can do to further this conversation. It doesn't stop here. Let me take the opportunity to thank Chinedu, Zainab, and the rest of their team for an excellent conference that they've put together. Thank you very much. <laughs>